This video will discuss the Hamiltonian operator of the hydrogen molecule. So after a hundred or so odd videos in this course, we are finally ready to discuss quantum mechanics on full-blown molecules. So for our hydrogen molecule, that's H2, each hydrogen brings with it one electron to make it electrically neutral. So two, uh, two nuclei and two electrons. Each nucleus has a charge of Za plus and Zb plus. For a hydrogen atom, those are both equal to plus one. They each have just one proton. But I'll keep labeling these as Za and Zb just so the uh, analogies for a general diatomic molecule are more apparent. But just anytime you see those for hydrogen, just substitute in the value one in your mind. The mass of each of those is equal to the mass of a hydrogen nucleus, which will be usually just one proton. We've got two electrons here. Each of them weigh mass of the electron, have a charge of negative E. And so of these four particles, we have kinetic energy for each of them, which is of interest, but we're also interested in the Coulomb interactions between all six pairs of them. So six distances of note are from nucleus one, sorry, from nucleus A to electron one, R1A, nucleus B to electron one, R1B, nucleus A to electron two, R2A, nucleus B to electron two, R2B, uh, electron one to electron two, R12. And what is new in this video and in this chapter is the distance between nucleus A and nucleus B capital R A B. So in principle, our Hamiltonian and our wave function will be a function of 12 variables. They'll be a function of the three Cartesian coordinates of each of our four particles. So we have electron one has three coordinates, electron two has three coordinates, nucleus one has three Cartesian coordinates, x, y, and z, as does nucleus B. So our Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi, depends on us specifying our Hamiltonian operator to act on this 12-dimensional wave function. So our Hamiltonian, as always, is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy of the nuclei plus the kinetic energy of the electrons. And the potential energy is equal to the potential energy between pairs of nuclei plus the potential energy between nuclei and electrons, all four cases of that, plus the potential between pairs of electrons. So our, our total Hamiltonian, writing that out, h, h hat is equal to kinetic energy of nucleus A minus h bar squared over two mass A, del squared A, minus h bar squared over two MB, del squared B, second derivative, sum of the second derivative with respect to each coordinate in B. These each are a nuclear kinetic energy term. Kinetic energy of our electrons, minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron, del squared one, minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron, del squared of electron two. Those are the kinetic energy of our electrons terms. Then we have four terms of electrons being attracted to nuclei. Mine, and in each case, the charge of the electron is negative E, charge of the nucleus is plus Z times E. So electrons and nuclei have opposite charges, so they will attract one another, giving a negative potential energy. So these terms are negative ZA E squared over four pi epsilon naught R1A, minus ZB E squared over four pi epsilon naught R1B, minus Z A ep E squared over four pi epsilon naught R two A. Oh, sorry, this was R one B. This is R two A. And minus Z B E squared over four pi epsilon naught R two B. Those are our nuclear electron attraction terms. We have our electron electron repulsion terms, same sign, repulsive potential energy, positive potential plus E squared over four pi epsilon naught R12, and nuclear nuclear repulsion terms, ZA times ZB E squared over four pi epsilon naught RAB. 
If we take all these terms and we put them into atomic units, where we divide, uh, where we set a whole bunch of things to, to equal to one, h bar is equal to one, mass of the electron is equal to one, uh, charge of the electron is equal to one, and four pi epsilon naught is equal to one. So what's left over is h equals minus one over two ma. This is now how many electrons worth of mass does this nucleus have? Del squared a minus one over two mb del squared b minus one over minus one half del squared one minus one half del squared two minus z a over r one a minus z b over r one b minus z a over r two a minus z b over r two b plus one over r one two plus z a z b over r a b. So our next task is to undergo a simplification to be able to tackle this Schrodinger equation, which is currently unsolvable with all of the terms that we currently have.